Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? 50 pips in the house, rocking and rolling. Great day here in the free world. 20th, 03, 2016. That's 20th of March, uh, 2016. So let's get cracking. Let's get rocking. Let's get a rolling. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. I hope everybody's going to have an even better end of the weekend and a better week ahead. So no trade calls, no recommendations. Everyone's responsible for their own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. So, you know, the fact that you're in here means you've read, you understand, and you accept that. And, you know, just some educational material for learning purposes only so it's uh good to see everybody in the room uh we're two um minutes ahead of time so um again we might as well start early bird catches the worm right so uh, it's good to see uh, uh, a bunch of uh, usual suspects in here uh, i love it when guys use the uh Twitter names so I can see uh, who's around and who's uh, who's rocking and rolling so uh, good stuff some old friends in the house so uh, let's get cracking so I mean as usual with these webinars uh, these the, these sessions really the uh, the aim for me is just to pay it forward right so we're just blocking some time and uh, we'll try and go through as many charts. So if the chart is, if we've got the chart on the on the platform, you call it out, we'll, we'll review it. If you're managing any trade, you have a, a question on something you're managing, you want a second opinion or what, what how we would look at it, more than happy to do that. If you have any uh, questions on your squatting, we can do that. Deadlifts, we can do that. If you've got problems uh, hitting the fairways, we can talk about that. Again, nothing's off limits. We got some time, and so we can do whatever uh, we need to. As usual, uh, we do what we call the jukebox system. So you just first come first serve right so there's just going to be a playlist that use the q a to write whatever you want me to look at and i'm just going to get through everything so if you ask for a pair and i'm not reviewing it you don't have to ask again it's in the queue i'll get through all the questions uh, uh we can so sooner you don't have to ask a couple of times okay so let's go first uh first come first serve shoot whatever you want to ask go ahead questions are open and the charts are open for review just let me know and i'll tackle them one by one rags effects in the house how's it going man good to see you around um good to see you around um yeah uh do you have any specific question on usd jpy or do you want to just a uh, general review of how we're seeing how we're seeing it I mean, this is our chart, and it's a bit messy, right? Uh, so just be before people ask, by, by our chart, we're, 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 we're talking about two things, right? So basically, I'm talking about these are all the charts we've got in the weekly webinars, right? So it's what we're doing, what we're trading. And the other thing is simply because I don't like using I. It's not because I'm pompous. It's just I sounds like I don't like talking about myself, so I just generalize it, right? So this is our chart. Uh, um, right here, well, before we get a malware scan, <laughs> what's going on here? Uh, there are a couple of things going on, right? And uh, you can look at this in terms of fundies. You can think. Uh, you can uh, look at this in terms of uh, central bank action. You can talk about. You can look at this in terms of technicals. There's two things I would say is that when you're trying to. Uh, bet aggressively against the central bank sooner later later people get lucky and they think they're geniuses but i think the graveyards are littered with a lot more people that bet against central banks they're not right because sooner or later even when they're trying to pr protect pegs we all know they give way right but we always forget of how many people died trying to be against it, right? Do you see what I mean, Rags Effect? So we know that, you know, BOE trying to defend the pound, um, uh, SMB trying to defend the, um, the Swissy. Sooner or later, uh, you know, we know what happened. It's, you can't fight against the market. But the problem is in the history books, you only remember the fact that they weren't successful in trying to defend something but you don't know the the, the you know the miles and miles of grain st uh, graveyards filled with retail traders and institutional traders trying to bet against them right so i always prefer to err on the side of caution and play 
with a central bank if I have to, right? Going into thinking about 80, 20%, you know, prefer, what, what tends to happen 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time, not what happens 20% of the time. But let's look at it technically. Now, clearly, this is a, the, it's very heavy, right? So how it's reacted to BOJ action, how it's trading, it's trading heavy, right? Having said that, as heavy as it trades, I, you know, if, even if you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't get short here, right? I, I wouldn't bet against it. So the way I prefer to look at this is that basically we've got two areas where we'll be extended and, and we think there's, there, there's more edge, right? Well, we always talk about this asymmetric risk reward. And we, we like engaging around the 115 and the 111s because that's where we think we could get a little bit more uh, more juice on the moves nice tighter stops if you want to be trade tight etc etc so right here the way this is trading the only action point is this 111 okay so what we've been doing is looking at this in terms of this core support expecting to whether it's the boj intervening whether it's somebody just saying that the boj is intervening on twitter we really couldn't care less about why we just care about what happens right so we're looking for tactical longs here and we prefer to trade the long side than the short side even though it's looking extremely heavy and this could very easily ultimately break does that make sense so it's a choppy chart it's a tricky one but i think it makes more sense to try and and, and look to the long side here rather than the sh short side because you know you could before you know even though the break could be heavy you could see trading back 115s okay so just to let you know and again no trade calls or recommendations the way we're looking at it is right is trying to trade with a fairly wide stop here right and trying to get in with a core position, say 100% of your position, right? And you see that if you go on another time frame, you tend to get you tend to get some decent spikes here into these levels, right? You know, here it spiked about 80 pips. Second time it spiked about 55. Then it spiked about 60, right? So the way we like trading these levels is getting in and trying to uh, understanding that probably it, it might break but we like to the the quicker move might be to the upside if it catches people off guard so we work a core position and on these spikes right then depending on how you're trading you take some off on the bounces and then add back in smaller quantities so let's assume you're getting in with you know 100 you're taking off 50 clips 25 clips or 50 clips but you're you're getting back in with kind of half of that size so you're trying to work your position and you know that ultimately even if it breaks through right you're still be be or positive on the trade simply because of the uh the activity you've had around that zone it, it's almost like trying to play protecting a big uh option level right that you protect it for a while and then you couldn't care less if it breaks because you've made the money on the protection does that make sense and um right and the problem is it's a really tricky one because you could say yeah i think the stops will hold no i think so and you got a 50 percent chance right is the 110 gonna hold it's a 50 50 flip a coin i have no idea i don't have a crystal ball would i be surprised if it breaks absolutely not would i be surprised if if it holds absolutely not to me it's a 50 50 it's a coin flip so i don't have an opinion but even if i had an opinion on whether that 110 is going to pierce i don't think that means anything it's just a 50 50 shot like that you know whether you want to look at it in terms of uh you know options and stuff and see what the real probability of it that's different but i think you get what i mean so um that's the way we're trying to be constructive around the level so saying if playing would prefer to play to the upside uh rather than um you know rather than get aggressive here at the short side now having said that i think it's an interesting discussion because should we get uh a big squeeze back into the 115s and all of a sudden it's hovering here and it's not doing it you know well then you're just it's ping pong zone right it's the opposite side nothing stops you for playing the same kind of trade or the same kind of strategy you were playing at the 111 playing it at the 115 right and i think that's especially the power in general in trading but also hey scott uh in these kind of ranges is to really have no opinion and have no bias 
and just hit the levels you know whenever the opportunity you got to grind these kind of charts so when the opportunity arises i think these charts uh, end up paying more to traders who, who who couldn't care less whether they're pushing the short or the long button they're just grinding around key levels that's it and these are the kind of charts where you just have to sit on dead money or dead positions for a long time and if you're if you have an opinion you know if you start thinking oh the boj has to do this the market has to do that uh, you get yourself into the worst kind of nightmares on these positions this kind of thing you end up having to hold for three years right <laughs> if you don't want to admit you're wrong so it's just a painful hold a lot of opportunity cost i i think it's better to be nimble if you're going to do anything here but you know we'll we'll uh, We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Is that OK? Any other comments, any questions on this uh, USD JPY? Can we move on to the next pair? And again, this is just the way we're looking at it, right? It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's wrong, right? And that's one of the things I want to I think it's really important to stress. I find so many people get bogged down spending so much time arguing with other people about why their way of looking at something is right or wrong or why the strategy they trade is the right one or the you know there's no right or wrong strategies whatever works for you right and opposing strategies can make money at the same time opposing strategies can lose money at the same time you know just use your positive energy to to trade your book and focus on what you're trying to do right if you're interested in what somebody else has to say listen if it makes sense to you good if it doesn't disregard but you know arguing on what who's right or who wrong only thing that's worth uh you know you're not going to get paid for arguing with somebody right the only thing you're going to get paid on is your trading so <laughs> focus on that um at least that is my humblest opinion those are my 0 0.01 cents um what's going on on usd cad usd cad a chart that um we were um interested in for a very long time and actually quite stubborn on this and uh all of a sudden starting to get a little bit more interesting okay so just a reminder all the guys who've been in these for a while or who follow the free youtube videos uh probably no surprise we've been uh, trading this only to the short side for quite some time looking for that bigger correction right very nimble to the short side and then we got a very nice move here on on this failure here a lot of different setups whether you're looking at daily uh four hours whether you're looking at this 78.6 you know there's a lot of different patterns that we're rolling up on this roll and we're looking at this roll to complete into the 200 right the other thing we need there's a very interesting level further down but as far as we're concerned this was a a correction in trend you have to respect that and we were looking for the 200 as final target you know most of the position off here then holding to trail for this level this confluence of the 100 and this previous resistance acting support and then 200 small runners my tiny 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 runners done and dusted then it hanged around here and it moved down an extension hard into this next area and it looks like it's trying to bounce now for those of you who remember we said once we were breaking hard on the 200 we said don't try and catch it let it come to you right and what did we mean about let it come to you is when we posted the weekly chart and we get you've got that 50 so let it come if it bounces it's going to bounce to the 50 if it can't catch a bit there it's just no way jose right just don't bother also because it's crude right it's all that crude so so just let let all the shorts get squeezed on crude let the unwind and just wait for a be better level so even though there have been there there was an opportunity i feel to get long on friday we haven't been very active on this because we took our profits on that and we've just been waiting right so right here uh, I think a lot, of course, is going to be uh, linked to how crude reacts. Uh, this is a, an interesting level, right? Because we found a previous, we've got a previous uh, resistance here. Sorry, support. We've got a previous resistance here that should act as support. So if it's going to bounce, this seems like an interesting place for it to bounce. Okay. Um, levels to the upside. So I would say this is the uh, 129 uh, core support for the week. If it can hold above this, we would expect to see some kind of a correction, possibly bounce all the way back into the 135. 
if it lets go and if it loses that 129, especially early in the week, then don't be surprised to see it roll all the way back down into the 125, much bigger correction. Again, this is a lot is going to depend on how crude crude trades too, right? We do have more inventories. We got some, you know, we got some stuff coming out this week. It should be interesting. Remember that this week is a is a holiday week, by the way, right? So uh, Monday fairly light. Uh, Tuesday we got RBA speaking. We've got. Um, from memory, all those PMIs, we got the IFO, we got ZEW. Then on Wednesday, we just have, I think we have New Zealand data. We have some trade balance data. Uh, Thursday, I think uh, we just have some some, some US, uh, we got unemployment claims. And then, you know, bank holidays, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so, you know, uh, starts to be lighter. So I, I'd much rather pray, play crude than, than, uh, than the USD can. But, you know, if anything, I'd say kind of baseline here, for the week uh, to the downside, 125s to the upside, these 135s. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? So, and I would guess, link to that, right? If all of a sudden you're, uh, you're moving back to crude, we got a picture a very nice pretty picture on crude right so we talked about you know we were very aggressively um trading crude to the long side and you know right now we're getting close to fairly extended levels uh you see this is a very interesting previous um support that should act as resistance you've got the 50 coming in on the weekly but more importantly as we discussed on the daily on twitter on friday we've you know we got nice protection of the of that you know this is pretty pretty nice right Previous support should act as resistance, held a lot, held a lot, is getting front run with sellers coming in or profit taking coming in just ahead of the 200. You know, this is as, as pretty as it gets, I would suspect, from a technical perspective, right? So also, I would assume, depends who you look at, but I think most, most of the houses will probably have a, a current fair value calculation on crude probably between 40 and 45 right so call it 4250 something like that so i think th this is a pretty good play again if you're long if you're flat this is not where we would be looking to get long if anything we would be looking for some tactical shorts now if this completely falls out of bed everybody is going to be kicking themselves because it's fairly pure as a short pattern but anything. So here I would say, you know, either sideline watching ready to get short or holding shorts from Friday. Right. And, and again, this will probably uh, uh, play a lot, have a lot to do with what happens on CAD. And, you know, on the downside, you know, we got some interesting levels. Now you'll have to see what happens at these two moving averages. You've got that previous this is look this is quite nice look at this the the magic of the charts right you know this previous big support where we had the breakdown that's going to come in and that's coming in uh smack ahead or it's probably going to come in ahead of that 100 so here we starting to be in those that familiar territory which is the chop 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 suey between the 100 and the 200 on the daily very choppy this is where we like to say don't get confused about velocity of move inside range now as much as that might sound fancy or whatever the only thing that means is don't get confused about velocity of move inside range is that as far as we're concerned the bigger players are short bigger players probably be looking to get longer cover shorts right in here probably a lot of retail action a lot of smaller fish action not a lot going on so we suspect that for the next strong move to come we'd probably have to see day close above this zone or we probably have to see a day close below this zone unless we get that we expect a two side action right and if that's that's a simpler way of, of saying it right the don't get cute confused by velocity of move inside range is this what i s came up with tweeting because it's shorter <laughs> okay any comments any questions anything anybody wants to look at anything anybody wants to discuss or are we good on usd cad can we move to the next chart and keep on asking any charts you want to look don't assume somebody else is going to ask for you uh, nobody can see it so don't be shy just pop it in any question you may have okay
Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, that's a fairly um, uh, similar action on uh, US uh, AUD on Aussie and Kiwi, right? So, um, let's look at it two ways. So, Aussie. So we've been looking at this uh, break and we've been talking about this bullish rotation here, the fact that it couldn't that it couldn't attract new sellers at lows. It was starting to rotate back higher. This was the pivotal level. And, you know, you can listen to what the market's telling you or you can be, uh, you know, angry and complain about RBA or whatever. But right here, once you see this unable to attract new sellers at lows, look at these. These are dailies. These are all positive closes. We're coming in here. We try to get a smackdown. Look at these wicks coming in. Look at these buyers coming in. Positive close, positive close. We talked about this being the pivotal level. Popped above, just the wick below. Close above, just the wick below. Close above, smackdown. All the wick, close above. Market's telling you, I want higher, right? And what we said is because of all this action, don't get, don't be in a hurry to short it because the sellers have probably exhausted their bullets wait for it higher up right so we've been sidelined on this waiting for it higher up and now it looks like we may have got a nice little uh, uh, little area where it may have uh, uh, been extended now the other thing also i'm not a huge fan but if you want to talk fundy talk etc etc you see what the boj is doing you see what the smb is doing you're doing what the uh, ecb is doing you see the surprise rate hike from new zealand you know rba is probably i guess we can uh, do something crazy and assume that the RBA is not dancing around naked, popping bottles of uh, crystal, happy about the AUD strength, right? So sooner or later, they're either gonna do something or talk it down. So Rags FS, this is another example where I wouldn't wanna be coming gung-ho getting long here, right? So similar to what we discussed on on USDJPY. So I think here's an, you know, a lot of people will be trying to short this here on the open. Uh, because of that daily close, a lot of profit taking. I just I see it just opened uh, a bit heavier. So uh, you know, fairly fairly classic action here. So um, if it, you know where to retrace here, I think you'd have to look at it for now. If you're going to be technical, you'd have to look at it at any retracement, just being a retracement and an upside rotation. So you know, look at these previous resistances to act as support or the downside of the channel. I think a fairly useful thing to look at, which is going to be similar on the uh, Kiwi, right? But let's get the Aussie chart is if you just look at all those moving averages, right? So I think all these uh, shorts here, new shorts coming in, all these people are gonna be playing, even with wider stops are gonna be playing for a move back down here. And I think the way to look at it is, let's see if we get some traction, let's see if the RBA can lend a helping hand and we get a move back into these three moving averages, this whole congestion zone here. And then if it can't get through, well, we have to reverse wait for it higher. If if we get through knife through butter then that means we're going lower hard so this seems to be an interesting uh, point to start to look for shorts right we'll have to see i i don't have any position here okay but i, I would assume that if it gets traction that's what should attract to the downside and very similar action to to rbnz right you know rbnz on kiwi they no secret they've been talking this down they've been intervening and you've got huge levels of resistance coming in then we got that surprise um, cut so i would assume especially if we can continue to hold through monday if we can hold on a day close below these 68 19 so below the 68 levels then i would suspect that this cluster of super strong support zone and these moving averages will probably attract um, coming into the week or you know as long as we can hold that through Monday close expect that to attract this week right do I look at hourly charts for trading and daily for support resistance and trend no not necessarily you'll see that in these webinars I tend to look at the four hours or the daily charts that's simply because a lot of people can't attend live right so some people will be watching the recording and I want some kind of an outlook that will be uh, relevant for the whole week right if I were doing it on a shorter time frame it it might be uh, it might no longer be relevant come Monday afternoon so that's the main reason uh, then you know whether you want to look at yeah you know, uh, what I would say is keep it as simple as you can and what I always say is no matter 
what indicator you use, no matter what time frame you're looking at, the really important supported resistance zones, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, they will come out at you and be present on all the charts, right? All the charts will indicate to the key levels, you know, the big range high, range lows, the big pivotal areas, etc. right? You'll get a confluence of, uh, you know, uh, of things that will show that. So even different people looking at different charts will probably come up with the same levels, right? And especially when they're very key. And that's why uh, probably the levels uh, you know, become it's a self fulfilling prophecy. They become so much more important because they're already important. People on different indicators, different ways of looking at the market, they all see them. So then, you know, more weight is, uh, is um, you know, right. And you'll see that with uh, 100 uh, or 200 DMAs, with uh, fibs, with whatever, you know, the things tend to line up, right? Okay. Comments, questions, anything anybody wants to look at? Any other chart? Yeah, sure. Um, what's going on on the euro? Uh, let's see where the, you know, euro has been uh, catching a lot of people off guard, right? Post uh, Draghi, etc. You know, after the 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 Draghi, which delivered a fairly uh, decent package you know the only thing you could have expected really here is for this to drop hard and for sellers to pile in for institutionals to flip short etc etc add to shorts so i think this caught a lot of people off guard and i think um it would not be normal in my humble opinion to not have been caught off guard here now you could have easily seen this and say okay it's going to pop but I would really like to put anybody through a lie detector test if they said that even when it popped here, they were expecting this to rally hard into the 112, right? So I'll be the first one on the book to say I was not expecting it to do this. Was I surprised? Absolutely not. I wouldn't be surprised if it went up a gazillion pips. I don't get surprised by what the market does. But I always tend to have a base case assumption on what I think is most likely to happen. Right. And that's where we focus our trading and our opportunities. So, again, did it catch a lot of people off guard? Sure. Did, did it catch us off guard? Sure. You know, does it mean we we uh, uh, we got short all the way up like crazy people putting on leverage? Absolutely not. Right. We know that on these releases, the edge is at the extremes. Right. So, uh, you know, we actually were short into it. Then we we uh, uh, covered. Uh, we tried to get short here, paid a little bit, tried to get short again, got stopped out, right? And then back short into this level. So, you know, just focusing on the zones. So I think, as we've said, it's, it's still um, very choppy in this range, right? And it, it seems uh, as though it's unable to, to get momentum or break outside, mostly because there's a lot of central bank wheeling and dealing. And there, they, you know, there, there are a lot of things going on and the market's really struggling to price the different things in. Uh, you know, whether it's uh, it's uh, central bank action, whether it's repatriation of flows, where it's hedging on hedging of positions, whether it's the commodity bounce, it's a tricky market, right? I don't think anybody should be surprised. Uh, you see a lot of hedge fund managers uh, blew up last year. A bunch of the biggest names are close to blowing up this year, and we haven't even finished Q1, right? So as retail traders, if, uh, if, if you are man enough to admit that the market is tricky and you're you've been caught off guard i think it's not very difficult to do right um so right here i say still a lot of velocity of move inside range very very choppy don't think there's an awful lot of edge trying to get um cute in the middle and think there there's edges at the extremes at the big previous uh, supported resistance zone right air nice area to get long on this hold right would have been a nice area to get long could be a nice area to get long nice area to get short could be a nice area to get short could be a nice area to get short if you're a breakout player those are the same levels you want to look at even though we're not huge fans of breakouts so right here the way i would look at euro is just as long as we don't get a daily close back above you know this uh 11370s right so let's put it this way we'd expect the path of least resistance is to come and tag 112 okay come right back in and tag this 112 uh, as a magnet pull and uh, then action around there will decide daily closes above probably try to catch a bid tone to try and take another stab at these highs daily closes below 
we'd expect it to come right back down. Uh, I think base case scenario is still for choppy action, possible tests to the upside here, but failure and ultimately a retest of these uh, 110s. Let's put it this way, 110 before 117, right? 110 before 117. I'd probably go, let's make it an equal move. I'd probably go as far as saying, let's make it a little bit more ambitious. You know, 108, 109 before the 117s, right? So I think still the pressures to the downside. I still expect rallies to get sold. I wouldn't be surprised to see some squeezy action, but structurally, the bigger money will probably remain a seller here. Okay, does that make sense? Any comments, any questions? Do I currently have a position on Euro? Yeah, I'm short Euro. I thought I said that before. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, gold. What's going on on gold? So uh, gold, uh, we're hovering here at highs, right? And it's looking for direction around the 1250s. Uh, trying to catch everybody off guard, right? It's clipping stops above what we call that black rock high, right? Um, clipping stops below these lows and really not getting any traction anywhere. When it tends to behave like this, it really likes to cause as much pain as it can and keep on taking uh, highs and lows out. Uh, our base case assumption is here still remains that ultimately even though we're getting a lot of choppy action and we might try and clip some upside it would the healthier move would be a rotation back down for then up so we'd expect to see this trying to come back down and base case 1200 1150 might be a gift from the gods if you're short or to pay out on your short or to get long but right here we'd expect this to try and come down back into the 112 uh, the range hasn't really changed I think it's still very choppy mid-range 1 1250 1300 upside 1200 downside so a lot of choppy action inside this range not an awful I think if you're trading I, I think here in terms of risk reward it's still more interesting to get short on bounces or on strength than getting long right here right now on weakness probably the longs might start to get a lot more interesting but for now it it looks very choppy right especially for people trying to t trade this too tight um right all these moving averages you see I, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible so what you will see um i they're always coded color coded the same right and the only moving averages you'll see and it's not necessarily because we use them it's just because it also helps explain things and and a visual reference for people when we're trying to talk through the charts is there's three lines it's the green one is a 50 the gray one is a 100 and the black one is a 200 and they're all simple moving averages they're not um, um, they're not exponential Nat gas, what's going on on nat gas? Again, so uh, full disclosure, I'm long nat gas. Uh, I'm long uh, UNG. I'm not long the the futures. Um, I would caution people if you if you if you trade this, uh, you know, futures is a big boy contract also. But I would also say if you're trading the um, the ETFs, be careful because a lot of the commodity ETFs, depending on how they're structured, uh, will have a lot of drag. So they're far from being ideal unless you're doing something in terms of uh, option activity against them if you're planning to hold them for a long time. Okay, so right here, um, I'm not looking at this too technically. I always prefer to look at this in just terms of asymmetric risk reward, and I get very excited. Uh, in brackets and so I'm joking but I like the fact when people think a commodity is gonna go to zero right I'm always interested so uh, here we're just playing for a, um, 
a return to some kind of normalcy and just a little bounce right after a lot of heavy action. Um, here I would stay very cautious simply because you know all it takes is one hedge fund to blow up or somebody to have to liquidate and it gets ugly quick but right here uh, we think it's trying to move back into these highs we could fill this gap but we like to see it in the twos. Um, if I were not holding a long position would I be getting long here? Absolutely not. No interest right uh, but I think it makes sense to try and trail some more longs for a move back higher. Uh, would I be getting short here? Uh, never, okay? Uh, simply because, you know, this is trading uh, so low, I'm just not interested to, to get short. But technically, right, this is still a downtrend, lower low, lower highs. If it comes here, though, I'm sure there'll be sellers. Won't be me, but I'm sure there, I'm sure there'll be sellers, okay? So uh, um, that's pretty much, I don't know if you have a specific question on it or if that, that answers your question. Yeah, um, S and P. What's going on on the S and P? So the S and P has been uh, um, quite nice to us. We can't complain. So um, I think if you go back on the weeklies, we're most probably one of the first, if not the first, loonies to call for a gap fill and a move back into the twenty fifties or into the twenties on this action, right? Uh, if you go back on some of the other webinars, we explained why this meant that also any selling into the FIB would be a much lower odd setup and the double bottom would lead to us to believe that it would break and ultimately hand higher and close. So we really can't complain on that. So as far as we're concerned, all the longs are done and dusted. That doesn't mean it can't go higher, but in terms of trades, we're flat on all the longs. Um, we move back higher here. We had some very nice action. We discussed this last week. A lot of very different long setups here, even on one hour positive closes. Nice little action. Then we're going into the OPEX week. We talked about how it tends to trade that, you know, if you want to play the odds, etc., you want to be looking to, to trade to the long side, expect more long side, not downside. And it played out pretty much um, as the doctor ordered, right? So now. Now it becomes interesting, right? So if you go back onto the different level, we've moved back up. We're holding uh, uh, into this uh, high on the weekly. So I don't know if you saw some of the other uh, levels, but we're talking about the range for us is now 2050, 2000, um, 1950. These are all ranges, so low, mid, high. And it's been, a it's been in a very nice set of range shifts to the upside, right? So this is where the shorts really have to start to come in and press this lower. Now here, if we get a daily close above the 2050, we would assume that we're in play for a new range shift and that we'll try and tag the 2100s. As long as we don't get a daily close above that 2050, our expectation is still for uh, 2000s to attract. Does that make sense, hammer time, right? So um, what do I make of all the hedge fund guys? Yeah, I think they're short in the hole and they're crying. Right. <laughs> Everybody call it. whenever somebody goes on TV talking their book, they're in the trouble. Usually. Right. It's very rare. Somebody's making money and they go on TV to talk their book. You know, the only time people go on TV or start to make a lot of noise is they need to offload something or they're in pain. Right. So this is a very interesting level going into the week. So as far as we're concerned, we're looking for tactical shorts. Right. And at this point, we feel that, you know, the risk reward is clearly to the short side. But you have to understand that you can get follow through and you could still get a lot of squeeze and a lot of pain. But, you know, above 2050s here for us, the play is most likely going to be tactical shorts, nimble, similar to what the way we talked about trying to play that yen at those lows, uh, you know, scalping the, the short side and see if we can hold some runners for a move down, uh, being fully aware that we could easily be trying to go for a range shift and we need to tag that 2100 or those highs just to make sure all the shorts at lows really puke, right? And only once we've cleared the book of all those guys and they maybe even tag new highs for the year, then we roll. But, you know, in terms of big velocity of the move, you know, if you're looking for the next five to 10% move at this point, 
you shouldn't be surprised if it comes to the upside, but I feel you shouldn't be playing for that to happen, if you see what I mean, right? So, yeah, I don't have anything against if you're trying to, to look at that level to try and, 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 and short, start to put some short, you know, to have some short exposure on the book. You know, I think it, um, I, I think it makes sense, sure. Okay. Any comments, any questions, anything anybody wants to look at, any other chart anybody wants to uh, review? I'm trying to go through the questions, but I think we're, so far it looks like we've pretty much tackled all the ones that came through. I just got a bunch of questions to go through. Yeah, I would, especially if you're a junior trader, I would really not focus on correlations that much uh, because correlations work until they don't. And I think especially as a newer trader, you'll tend to make things uh, harder for yourself rather than easier. So I think it makes sense to plan each chart individually, right? And and focus on one chart at a time, one setup at a time, and, and not make things harder than they should be by focusing on on correlations or trying to read the correlations because they'll probably end up giving you a bias and it's not ideal right and when they do turn because they turn if you're not that experienced it'll probably take you a while to catch up to the fact and um, and that means that you know you'll, you'll you'll you're just making it harder for yourself right Sure, yeah, you know, on, on cable, uh, it's trading on Brexit, right? So it's a tricky one because you can look at it in terms of the chart pattern, or, but I think you have to be very, very careful because all it's going to take is one headline to, to pop it or tank it, right? So as you've seen in the past weekly webinars, right, uh, or, 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 or these uh, weekly updates, we're trading uh, cable to the long side, as um, our friend uh, RagsFX had a suspicion, market was desperately begging to fill that gap, and that's what we were focused on, right? Now, as usual, as we were trading at lows, everybody was excited, pound is going to zero, pound is going to zero. What we said is, you know, market always tends to overshoot. Even before we get a referendum, you know, probably risk range is going to be one 135s, right? Max to the downside, you're starting to get so close. You look at these basing pattern, it makes a lot more sense to play the fill than to get short in the hole, right? Then what happened? We fill the gap and then everybody started to get, oh, you got to get long cable. You got to get, get long cable. It just smacked down, right? And then so it's just killing the the short-term players, right? I think here you have to understand there's very little edge. It's trading on headline risk. You've got a lot of position unwind here and there. So it's a tricky one, right? Uh, so if you're, uh, what I would say, if you're a newer trader and you get very interesting risk reward opportunities at extremes, I think it makes sense. But don't try and chase headlines or don't ch try and chase Momo because you could easily get into a lot of troubles. I would stay very technical if you have to. Now, here on the chart, as we said uh, last week, is that we felt that the risk to the upside, uh, you know, didn't make sense to try and chase the upside and this whole area if anything we're starting to look for downside plays um, just to bet on a more healthy market I mean if you look at the chart the chart is very very bullish uh, but you have to respect this area so unless something silly happens or or the pulls really change I would expect the market to sell it here and I wouldn't be surprised for us to go into the referendum you know inside this area in the 140s somewhere here right but most of the wheeling and dealing will probably be done before the referendum and then the big pain trade will come on whatever the result here but um, clearly here whether referendum or not whether you look at the you know even in terms of data it makes a lot more sense to us to look for tactical shorts coming into the zone than trying to get long right here ahead of this previous resistance this previous resist uh re support this previous resistance and this channel so it, that's the way we'd be looking at cable okay
Any comments, any questions? Any other chart anybody wants to look at? I think we've done most of the charts. Okay. Well, that was quick and easy, guys. Ah, oh, that's a lot more important. You need to go, Hammer Time. <laughs> Okay, guys, listen, thank you so much for uh, stopping around and, and hanging with me for a while. Uh, uh, the webinar is being recorded. I'll post it in, in a minute or so on the blog. So again, as usual, I'll try and do these every once every month. So we'll do three recorded ones and then we'll do a live one. So again, thank you so much for, hey, Alex, hey, everybody. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. It's always fun to spend some time together and look at the charts. And uh, I'll post it. See you guys on Twitter. Anybody has any chart we discussed here today they want me to post on the blog, just hit me up on Twitter and I'll post it. Okay, guys? Have an awesome one. Thank you so much. And wishing you all the best. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.